Welcome everybody to the NatSpec Awards 2021. My name is Lynette Barrett and I am the newly appointed in February of this year Chair of NatSpec and I'm honoured to be opening the award ceremony for this year. We're absolutely delighted to see so many people in attendance and today's awards will be able to see all of the innovation, excellent practice and all of the superb work that you've all been doing over this last year. Today's ceremony will actually draw a very successful NatSpec conference to a close. And I think it's a really good way to actually conclude what has been such a wonderful week. So thank you for joining us to share in these celebrations. NatSpec remained committed to make sure that the awards ran this year, to ensure that everybody in the sector had the opportunity to show the innovation and excellent practice that they've been demonstrating over this last year in some really difficult times. I think all of us that work in, in the sector really have recognised the pressure and the stresses that we've been under over this last 14 or 15 months. Yet, without exception, colleges across the country have pulled out all the stops to ensure that the students still get the absolute best possible experience, whether that be in the college itself or, or from home. And I think that that is a huge achievement for us all to feel very proud of and to celebrate. Before I move on, I'd like to just go through a few etiquette aspects of Zoom. So please forgive me for going through the housekeeping, but it's, it's my job to do so, I'm told. So um, first of all, I'd just like to say that this event is recorded and um, I hopefully that everybody is happy with that. Um, and it can be found on the YouTube channel for those um, that are unable to attend. For security reasons, the room to access the celebrations will close at 10 past two. So we're pretty much around approaching that now. So the last few may just be being let in now, but then the room will be locked down at 2.10. Please, can you keep yourselves muted throughout the ceremony? Um, and you will be unmuted as winners are announced so that you'll be able to whoop and cheer and clap and anything else that you might want to do. So um, don't worry, you'll be, your celebrations will be heard as winners. Once we've started, can you please also keep your videos off? Um, if, if you are the agreed representative or shortlisted college, et cetera, um, then you will be able to have your, your videos put on. Again, that will all be managed. So please don't worry, you will be seen, you will be heard um, as a shortlisted. Um, representative or as a winner. Um, also, just another, another small one, if you are able to switch to speak of you from the top of your screen, this is the best way to view the ceremony. So that's the best way for you to see everything that's going on. And please feel free to interact throughout the conference as much as throughout the celebrations and the, the awards, as much as we don't, you know, we don't want cameras on and unmuted, we, all, we do want to hear your celebration. So, the thumbs up, the clapping and all of the different emojis that can be used from the bottom of your, your screen will be being looked for. So please, please do feel free to do that. And just really um, finally to, to, to summarise before we allow the, the, the celebrations to start and we start to hear who has, who has won the awards this year. Um, I just want to again uh, recognise the hard work and commitment that has um, gone into um, the, the, the work that we've done over the whole year in these really difficult times. This year, everybody has shown such resilience and uh, determination to not be defeated, even when times in, in look so un uncertain and so difficult ahead of us. Um, I, for one, have been inc incredibly impressed by seeing what colleagues have done across the sector in terms of innovation and ensuring that students have remained engaged, learning and achieving their outcomes um, and able to, to move on and achieve those aspirations that they've had. And I think, you know, today we're going to see some winners. Absolutely. And that's great to see who's going to pick up the awards. But I think as a sector, we can celebrate and say, I think all of us are winners in terms of ensuring that our colleges have remained open, have remained operational, and our students have remained educated and nurtured over one of the most difficult 14 or 15 months of our careers. And I think probably everybody would recognize that. So I will now um, bring my part to the close um, and, and say good luck to everybody. Um, I can't wait to see who the winners are and I will now hand over. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Lynette. Um, and some lovely warm words there for the sector, which, which we absolutely, uh, uh, you know, we welcome and we agree with wholeheartedly. Um, just before I start, I would like to let you know that Claire Howard, our chief exec, is very disappointed that she can't be here today, but she has been having knee surgery. She's already messaged us to say she's out and she's fine and, and, and to wish you all the best for the ceremony. She did say the worst moment was when the surgeon said, can I have a bigger hammer, please? <laughs> so uh, I, hope, uh, <laughs> I hope she survives the experience. But it's great to be able to get together with all of you for this second time that we're, we're running an award ceremony. And unbelievably, the second time that it's been virtual, we've actually yet to have a live award ceremony. You know, what a shindig we'll have when that does come around. But it's great to be to be celebrating today. Um, please do celebrate uh, on social media as well. Uh, use the hashtag, uh, just hashtag Matspec Awards. Very simple, um, so that you can share with you know with the wider sector what we've been up to. We added two new categories this year, so we've got eight awards to give away, um, having added home learning and curriculum to the six that we uh, had last year. Each of our eight winners has demonstrated excellent practice in a different aspect of specialist further education. And we want to celebrate together their achievements. And at the same time, to use this as an opportunity to promote continuous improvement and raise standards across our sector. We were looking from our entrance for practice that is innovative, that's been introduced over the last two to three years so that it's had some time to bed in and show some demonstrable impact for students. And also things that are sustainable, not, not just a, a one-off, a flash in the pan, but they, they can continue and be capable of further development. And we do want to find things that we can share that are, provide useful learning for the specialist sector. We had approximately 50 entries for the awards. And again, the standard was really high. I want to thank everyone who entered and congratulate all of the colleges who made it to the shortlist. And to thank them as well for yesterday sharing their expertise in a conference workshop, which I gather was ex uh, you know, extremely successful and it's something we'll definitely be doing again in future years. If you are not a winner this time round, as, uh, you know, as Lynette said, in, in a way we're all winners, um, you might be interested in the top tips on our awards website, which will help you submit even better entries next next time around. We will be updating those further to uh, capture some of the learning from this year and, and we'll let you know when we've done that. So I'm now going to hand over to Nigel Evans, who has been our judge this year. Nigel was formerly uh, one of Her Majesty's Inspectors for Further Ed Education and Skills at Ofsted. Despite that, he was a great friend to us. Or perhaps because of that, he was a great friend to us. And we were really delighted when last year he accepted our invitation to become chair of the NAPSPEC Awards judging panel. And I think he enjoyed himself so much he agreed to stay on this year. So thank you, Nigel. Mm -hmm. I shall hand over to you at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. And uh, yes, it's again been an absolute privilege to be um, part of the, uh, the, the, the panel judging the NAPSPEC Awards. And, and again, I'm just staggered at the... Um, and of the submissions it just demonstrates just even in the midst of this global pandemic that the sector can display extraordinary innovation expertise and creativity um i guess it was a challenging task you you didn't make our lives easy uh, you folks out there with your superb um applications and things like that and it really made, wasn't easy to, to, to bring out the, the single individual winners. And I do thank my um, fellow members for their, for their time, their effort, their diligence, um, and the care they took in coming to the right decisions. And similar to last year, what was again encouraging, despite everything that's going on, was, was the, the way in which partnership working continues. And that really does add a lot to the impact of the innovations of the awards of the, of the projects that you did and those are the things that really seem to make some of them successful and 
the technical skills that were, were brought in, you know, you, we've, it's a small sector, but the, as we've said before, it punches well above its weight. And the ability to draw on other experts, other people with experience, expertise, skills, really has enhanced what's going on. And again, the panel were delighted to see the number of um, projects aimed at young people with the most severe, profound disabilities. And they do have the potential to, to enhance the lives, to change the lives of these young people and give them more control. And huge thanks to, to all the staff, to the students, and all the organisations who've contributed to the submissions. Um, without doubt, all of the projects will make a difference to the people, to people you work with. So that's enough of that. And let's get on to the bits that people really want to hear about, isn't it? And uh, the first, I'm going to announce the first award, and uh, that's the um, the award for curriculum innovation. So the shortlist for the award is. There we are, we can see Bridge College with their integration of therapy within the curriculum, Linkage College, flexible, engaging, and innovative, Orchard Hill College, Reset, Recover, Reconnect, and Sheeling College, the Resilience Curriculum and Assessment Tool. And so, the winner is oh, yay! Yay! Hooray! well done orchard hill <laughs> college well done fantastic and, uh, and and this 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 was was a very very impressive uh, project and it's successfully it's the rec recover reset recover and reconnect as it says there on the slide and it successfully helps those students return to the classroom after extended periods of absence. And it, of course, COVID was affecting everybody and it, and it really did respond to those students who'd, who'd been, had their learning disrupted. And what it did do was, was identify the importance of rebuilding routines, managing friendships, getting used to being a student again. Um, and it did have a strong impact on the students' social, emotional and physical well-being. And what was again quite impressive about this was the model developed can easily be used for other situations, for example, if students returning to college after long absence or joining after other students had, had, had started. So what we were saying early on, it is sustainable, is viable and will add value. So a huge congratulations to Orchard Hill. Well done, everyone. Well done, folks. Thank you. So I'm now going to hand over to our, our judge, Rowan, Rowan Slaughter to announce the Innovative Use of Technology Award. Now, Rowan has had 20 years of experience of supporting technology in the educational sector. So he's a very, very experienced expert in this area. Uh, member of the NatSpec Technology Strategy Group and is currently Senior Lecturer in Assistive Technology at the University of Dundee. Over to you, Rowan. Uh, thank you, Nigel. I'm very pleased to, to be here uh, today. Um, to uh, announce this uh, award for innovative use of technology. So we have um, a short list to go through. Uh, we've got uh, Beechwood College, uh, which, uh, whose project was about embedding the use of IT to increase student engagement in learning. And that was focused on integrating the use of personal uh, iPads for students into the daily curriculum, where they were adapting teaching methods uh, to improve engagement. So there was a range of applications that were used by Beechwood there. So the second, uh, second, uh, the second uh, shortlisted uh, college is Bridge College. And this was for the integration of the QT robot. Uh, so this was introducing a humanoid social robot that was, in, was designed to supplement existing teaching uh, and to enhance social interactions, communication skills, levels of engagement and mental well-being of, of the uh, students with autistic spectrum disorder. Uh, so the third uh, college in the, in the shortlist is uh, Orchard Hill, um, who worked on adapting Alexa uh, to be used as assistive tech, um, both in the college and at home. Uh, and this was about providing functions such as communication and the ability to control the environment, play music, that kind of thing. Uh, so they're the three shortlisted colleges. Can we go to... Hey, 
I haven't switched her um, video on, so I can't spotlight. I'm really sorry. If they do, oh, there we go. There we go. Yay! <laughs> well done, Bridge College. Well done. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, absolute congratulations to uh, Bridge on on winning this uh, category. So whilst the actual use of technology was uh, very clearly innovative, I think the thing that really stood out about Bridge's application was that we had really good video evidence from students and staff, and that really um, that really levelled it up for us in terms of showing the impact. The other element that was really clear in Bridge's application was that uh, they submitted an extract from their curriculum framework that showed how the the practice had been embedded into um, into into the curriculum, and I think those two pieces of evidence uh, really allowed us to to see the impact that this this really good use of technology was having. So well done, Bridge! Fantastic. Good. Thank you, Rowan. Thank congratulations to Bridge. That's that's a fantastic achievement there. And uh, next award is the Pathways into Employment. And i um, very pleased to introduce Yola Jacobson, who's the Transform Manager at, uh, at NASPEC. And she's standing in for our Judge Jane Hatton. Um, uh, Jane was the, the founder of and CEO of Evenbreak, established in 2011, an award-winning social enterprise run uh, for disabled people. And, and sorry, Jane can't be here, but we're very pleased that uh, the Yola is going to, um, to, to perform the um, awards for this particular category. So over to you, Yola. Thank you, Nigel. So the short list for the Pathways into Employment Awards, we start with High College for their live study programme. And it's a programme which is focusing on preparing learners for employment and providing careers appointments and establishing aspirations and setting realistic future goals in order to get work placements. The second college that's on the shortlist is LEAP College um, and their project is around supporting students aspirations and goals. So they've been inspiring, preparing young people for the world of work through taste for opportunities, work experience, independent travel training and access to leavers who act as role models. And the final college which is on the shortlist for this award is St John's. And their project is St John's The Bevy Community Work Experience Project, which is an innovative work scheme for students working in partnership with a local community owned pub. So cheers about that. And a professional chef and trainer they're also working with, delivering high quality work experience with industry standards, skills and certificates and qualifications. And the winner is... Congratulations. Well done, to well done to the students, Lee. Huge, huge congratulations to Leap College. Well done on your win. And uh, as Nigel said, I'm standing in for Jane Hatton. And I just wanted to let you know what Jane said about this winning entry. She really loved the variety of opportunities which was giving young adults a choice about their careers. She loved the post-16 coffee mornings, offering ongoing peer support, and that the students were involved in fundraising. And she felt that the programme seemed really empowering of the young people with a real thought to how each person was able to contribute according to their abilities and aspirations. So huge congratulations to you. Oh, thank you, Yola. And again, and I'll give my congratulations to Leap as well. Uh, right, moving on now. Next is the um, the award for interdisciplinary working, and I'm very happy and very pleased uh, to introduce Lorraine Moroni from uh, who's the national lead for Send NHS England, and Lorraine is passionate about working across education, health, and care. And since June 2016, Lorraine has worked as the senior nurse for children and young people in, in, in NHS England. Uh, she previously held clinical roles across hospitals and community settings. Uh, 2021, I don't know if I should be saying this or not, 2021 is also Lorraine's 30th year in the NHS. So over to you, Lorraine. Thank you, Nigel. And um, what a great introduction. 
but I guess I'm really honoured um, to, to be here today and um, a heartfelt thanks to all in the sector. I know it's been tough over the last uh, year and there are more things to come, but today is about celebrating and that's what um, will keep us all positive, knowing that we're going in the right direction. So um, I had the category of Interdisciplinary Working Award and you'll see here from the shortlist, there were three um, colleges shortlisted. So Communication Specialist College in Doncaster introducing their smile therapy, uh, which was something I knew, uh, I didn't know anything about, so I learned a lot. So introducing a recognised communication programme that teaches students skills of communicating independently in a variety of settings in the community. The second um, shortlist was Linkage College around Lego therapy um, and piloting, embedding and reinforcing Lego based therapy that now has been used successfully across many um, um, areas across the four campuses. So the third um, shortlisting college was Portland College, positive behaviour support zones of regulation, be healthy, active and courageous a series of linked initiatives that have the learner at the centre with a focus on health and well-being. So, congratulations to Portland College. Um, I will say a little bit about why I was particularly um, excited about this work. Um, there was lots of interdisciplinary working and working with OT, speech and language, which has been one of our things across the last year that we want to improve. And I was particularly um, pleased about that, especially the training programme. I was also really, really happy and I had a huge smile when I was watching the YouTube videos from the perspective of the parents and what it meant for students and not only in college, but in their li everyday lives. Um, yep. So thank you again to Portland College for, for your work. Be healthy, active and courageous is a fantastic initiative and I hope that you share it widely. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Lorraine. And again, congratulations to Portland. Superb, superb uh, award there. Now, next up is the award for partnership working. And um, we're going to bring back Ruth for this one, uh, who's be announcing this category, on behalf of uh, Yolanda Burgess, uh, who's the lead at the Councils for Young People, Education Skills and Grants Community Services. So over to you now, Ruth. Hi, everybody. Um, I know Yolande is really disappointed she can't be with us. She's another great friend in that spec, and she's a huge advocate for specialist EPI and for partnership working. And she was really impressed with our shortlist this year. And here they are. So we have Heart of Birmingham Vocational College and their partnership with Edgebuston Priory Club. We have Henshaw's Specialist College. There was a, an e-commerce partnership with Harrogate Fair Trade. And we have Linkage College, which was a community-wide partnership uh, covering uh, community facilities, heritage, and the college. And the winner is... Um, Yolande has asked me to say that she was particularly taken with the whole area approach that underpinned this project, that it was a, a partnership that brought the college and its partners together as key strategic stakeholders in their community. And through this project, she says, they've demonstrated leadership and a clear commitment to ensuring that everyone in their local community has the chance to live, work, enjoy and thrive. So many congratulations to you, Linkage College. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ruth. And again, congratulations from me to Linkage. Right. Well, next up is the uh, award for student voice. And I'm um, happy to welcome back Yola, who will be announcing the winner on behalf of our judge, Alex Johnson. 
Now, Alex, again, very supportive of the work of, of Natspec and, and very valuable in his um, contributions. And he was a very passionate disabled rights campaigner and founder of the Inclusive Ability Group. And uh, he believes that disabled people should always have access to any educational path they want. Alex is a former Harrywood student and was always passionate about student voice while he was there and a very key member of the NatSpec's Right Not a Fight campaign. Okay, over to you, Gail. <laughs> well, while Yola just puts her camera on, um, my error, of course, Alex was a national star student. I've fed duff information to Nigel, so apologies for that. And congratulations, as a national star for uh, uh, nurturing a, a young disability activist. I hand back to Yola now. Thank you, Ruth. Um, hello, it's me again. I'm really pleased to be able to um, announce the winner of the Student Voice Award from a fantastic shortlist, which is uh, first up Beechwood College for their work with ensuring all learners have an equitable say in what happens in college. And here they've been focusing on the inclusion of non-verbal students in student voice activities. And then we have the online forum from colleague Elidia. So they're adapting their well-established forum during the pandemic by running weekly online student meetings. And finally on the shortlist, we have Sense College. It's a multi-site cross-college learner for forum addressing complex communication challenges um, to achieve collaborative success in the area of learner voice. And the winner is... Congratulations. Oh, it's fantastic to see you celebrating there, Sense College. Well done, well done. So um, I wanted to let you know what Alex said about your, your entry. He was really impressed with the video. He thought the video was great. He liked the use of colour, he liked how clear it was that it could show the technology being used to support, to support the student voice and he got the feeling that everything was a real group effort that, in the work that you're doing there. He, it showed, the video showed how students were encouraged to be involved and how they use signing. Alex really liked the way you use signing in your video. So huge congratulations to you. Oh, thank you, Yola, and congratulations to all of you at Sense College. Very, very pleased to, uh, to see what you've been doing there. And our next up is the Award for Wellbeing and Mental Health. And I'm very, very honoured to introduce Liz Maudsley. Liz has spent, well, pretty much all her working life working in further education as a teacher, then a manager for students with special educational needs. And she was, until this year, policy manager for SEND with the Association of Colleges a job which involved closely working with the DfE issues on issues regarding students in further education with high needs, as well as the even larger number who have any kind of disability, learning difficulty or emotional and mental health need. So over to you, Liz. Hi, everyone. And it's really good to be here. I retired a few weeks ago, so it's great to be back in a, a work context. And particularly good to be judging the Wellbeing and Mental Health Award because wellbeing and mental health issues are, of course, important all the time, but particularly important the last year with all the challenges people have had. So the shortlist, Aurora Bowbridge College, who had designed a really good wellbeing and mental health wheel, which gave a bespoke holistic self-assessment for students to use during one-to-one -one tutorial meetings. And Eat That Frog, community wellbeing program who had designed a holistically tailored online course using simple mm -hmm. modules on various aspects of wellbeing that could be used by anyone and then had used this with their students. Um, it was close, they were both very good, but somebody has to win and the winner is in the end. <laughs> Okay, eat that frog. I, I loved reading all of your things. 
um, it was clear you knew your students so well. You knew all the individual things that were most appropriate to support their well-being. And there was such a huge range of things that your students were doing. Um, there was an amazing video Brilliant. on exploring uh, who you would get to explore his Russian identity, which was one with his family more closely. Um, there were students going off to deliver meals and craft activities for care homes. There were students walking people's dogs, someone going on a charity walk and then cleaning up the beach. And I was particularly impressed with the way you'd enabled your students to actually be able to do things that involve them in giving to other people. Because we all know that giving to others is such an important part of well-being, and it's something that often people with learning difficulties don't have access to. Um, I was, I, I kept on thinking when I was hearing, reading through all your things, of the five ways to well-being, which I think is one of the best and simplest sort of mental health checklists. And what it says is the important things to develop well-being are to connect with other people, to be active, to learn something new, to give to others, and to pay attention to the present moment. And whether it was conscious or not, and it's fine if it's not, I thought you were actually enabling all your students to do all those things. And it was clear from the things that I read that the students had really enhanced their well-being because of that. So huge congratulations and, and keep going with it. Thank you. It's a great team to work for. Really proud of them. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Liz, and thank congratulations to that frog. And it's just lovely to see that a relatively new entrance to the um, to the sector are still keen to innovate and still keen to contribute and things like that. So that's really good to see. So you don't have to be one of the established colleges to 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 win an award. So our final award um, is in our other new category uh, for twenty twenty one which is the home learning category. And to announce this, I'm very happy and uh, privileged to introduce Helen Brooks. Helen worked for the Department for Education and was involved in developing the Children and Families Act and the SEND Code of Practice, uh, and particularly in policies relating to further education sector and preparing for adult life. Now, that, in that role, Helen worked very closely with the post-16 colleges, both the mainstream and the specialist sector, to help them put the reforms into practice. So over to you now, Helen. Thank you very much, Nigel. Thank you. It was a real privilege to be a judge for these awards. Um, everybody has said it already, um, but it's worth saying again, what an extraordinarily challenging and difficult year it's been for everybody. And for, for colleges and students, it's been so tough. And this award was really important because this award is how colleges are supporting students who couldn't come into college and, and how are they going to keep their learning going in a really positive way. And so we've got um, a very exciting shortlist for you. Uh, one is Ambitious College, which used a, a, an innovative approach to home teaching to make sure students were still engaged with their daily learning at home. Uh, Fox's Academy, Learning Through Lockdown, which uh, used a, a different curriculum to help prepare students to be work ready and life ready. And Sheeling College uh, had a self audit tool, which helped uh, to support the uh, delivery and implementation of, of home learning and, and is valuable for other colleges as well. So really strong shortlist. And the winner is... Oh. Congratulations. <laughs> And we're delighted that, that Ambitious won. They were, they were all brilliant. Um, but Ambitious is a wide variety of approaches and materials. Um, was very strong. And I think one of the things that stood, stood out for them, especially in, the, in this, was that even though it was such a challenging time, what I loved about Ambitious's uh, colleges uh, application was the way they 
took home learning as an advantage so that uh, students were able to learn how to do important activities uh, like cooking and laundry and so forth in their home environment uh, and that that was giving them an opportunity to learn the things that they'd already learned at college and transferring them to a new environment which is such a crucial skill uh, they were personalized um, and they had a wealth of materials such as um, using zones of regulation to help students regulate their their well-being and their mood really bright clear instructions that i loved and also um, occupational therapy tv was one of the resources they used so they they, they had a lot there um, and they're well-deserved winners, so congratulations to Ambitious College. Thank you, thank you very much, Helen, and um, congratulations to Ambitious College, and in fact to, to all our winners today, and, and, and huge thanks to everybody who's contributed to this, uh, this ceremony, and all the hard work that everyone has put in to, to make it all work. I'm now going to hand over to Ruth, who's going to tell us about the, um, the very exciting trophies that the winners will be receiving. Thanks, Nigel. Yes, once again, our trophies are student designed. We had some great bids come in when we put out our, our invitation to uh, all of our colleges, and we really uh, couldn't separate them in the end. We ended up with two colleges designing our awards, and both of them have shared some wonderful pictures of the trophies that they've been making. So we're giving you a quick sneak peek of what they've been working on. Here you can see the students at Portland College, have designed and uh, are making seven of our trophies using a combination of skills. Um, you can see there that they're frame making, silicon molding, resin cutting. And we also have a specially commissioned trophy to celebrate our home learning award. And that's being designed and made by students at St. John's. Staff and students have been busy working on these trophies. They're not quite ready yet, but they will be on their way to you before the end of the summer holidays and we will alert the winners to let them know that they're, they're due to arrive. And we will make sure that we send pictures of the finished items, sorry, that we share pictures of the finished items on social media. Um, I, I will probably run them on our website as well. And we'd ask winning colleges, please tweet photos. It was a lovely part of last year when the trophies hit the colleges. Um, Twitter was a, a light with all these grinning students waving the trophies above their heads. Um, uh, so thank you very much to those two colleges. You have there in front of you now a summary of, of this year's winners. And as we come to the end of our ceremony, I'd like to give a special thank you to Nigel and to all the judges on the NatSpec 2021 awards. We are really grateful to you for giving up your time to support us and I hope you've enjoyed the experience. Congratulations again to all you winners and well done to all the shortlisted colleges and thank you to everyone who submitted an award. Uh, I think it was uh, Lynette who said at the beginning, you know, we pushed ahead with this award ceremony regardless. But I do have to share with you, there was a moment when we seriously considered cancelling the awards this year. We thought you had so much on your plates that you wouldn't have time to submit entries. And then we saw how many submissions were already in the inbox and we reversed our decision very quickly. And it, that's a testament, I think, to you all and typical of our colleges who throughout this torrid time have just cracked on with as much business as normal as they can. And we're really grateful to you for doing that. I hope you can continue your celebrations virtually or otherwise. We will be raising a glass to you here at NatSpec and I hope, hope you might do the same. We're going to close now with a short video from the winners of our Student Voice Award, Sense College East. Some of the surf and learners in this video are here with us today. So a big shout out to you and thank you for letting us showcase your work. Thank you very much to everyone for joining. Enjoy. What I like about them is you get to do the meetings and meet other members of the forum who go to different sense college just
Mr. Nevada govern the rest because I'm interested in other people's views and their opinions on how we can make the college a better place to be. Then you, then you make them feel happy, safe and confident. Thank you very much to Sense College for sharing that with us. Um, what a fantastic way to end, giving the last word to the learners. Congratulations to everyone. Enjoy your celebrations. Cheers. Oh,